Reed and Doherty. They don't look like they're running very fast, but they are. Don't be deceived by that. They're running very fast. And the two of them, side by side, they opted not to wear hats, which could add a little heat to their head. Let's see how what happens here. They, sometimes they'll play some mental games and not breathe too hard. They don't want the other competitor to know if they're hurting. Well, this is an interesting part of the course, the first challenge, and this is down the stairs. As we see there, Reed opting to stay up on the side. Doherty followed soon after. Now they have three kilometers of dirt track. Yeah, this, this will be a slower surface for them. It uh, will work more of their hamstrings because they're flicking their legs up. Let's see what happens in this dirt trail here. And here comes McCormack. He has moved up into that third spot. His legs have come back to him, and he's chasing. It looks like he's put some time back into these guys a little bit. He, he knows of the sense of urgency. He needs to close the gap as quickly as possible. Well, McCormack, uh, in his early stages, was one of the best runners in the sport of triathlon. The pace is increasing. If you're Matt Reed here, you want to get rid of Bevan as soon as possible. Like I mentioned before, Bevan is a sprinter. The longer Bevan's with Matt, the better the advantage is for Bevan. Fleischman now is also into that dirt section. He's losing time to McCormack, but he's still holding fourth. And look at this incredible scenery. This course has to be one of the most unique in the sport of triathlon. It's beautiful. It's it's one of, arguably one of the most beautiful courses. This one in Cape Alcatraz, they have the same kind of beauty to it. Well, of course, the Escape from Alcatraz Triathlon, one of the most famous races in the world. And this is a qualifying series event for the age groupers. 50 athletes will be picked from here to go to Alcatraz. Up the stairs, back to the women, though. And our leader is Becky Lavelle. What a ride. She must have ridden through the group. She's come from very far behind, got off the bike with the leaders, and let's see what happens here on the run. And a great ride also by Nikki Samuel without those aero bars, but Sarah Groff is right behind, arguably the best runner and in great training given that she's just come off the Olympic Games. And if you're Becky and Nikki, you did not want this. This is the worst case scenario. Sarah Groff coming off with you guys for the run here. Look at this neck and neck. Three women are out in the lead. Only one can win. Talk about the pressure of being in the lead and knowing that people are chasing you down. When you come off the bike, and Becky's ridden very hard to make up the gap, she's probably more tired than the other two athletes. And here we see Jenna Parker. She's also had a good ride. She is by herself, and she knows she's got a lot of work ahead of her. you got to wonder how much energy she used up by herself. The other three might have been working together. Jenna's in no man's land by herself. Here are the bike splits at the end. Becky Lavelle, who took the lead, 128-11. Samuels Groff, Jenna Parker, Ricarda Lisk. Look at that, eight minutes down. And Jung Yi also losing time. In a country with an extraordinary history, Fung Tai plays a leading role all through the ages. Dating back more than 2,000 years, it was once home of the Lao and Jin dynasties. Nowadays, it's a mix of yesteryear and the modern on the southwestern fringe of Beijing. And here's Bevan and Matt approaching the halfway point, the 5K mark in the run. Well, I'm sure that one of these athletes would have wanted to drop their fellow competitor. They now have five kilometers of pain. They are pushing each other. Look at that, Matt Reed. Oh, you can see the pain on his face. Doherty is trying to break him. Doherty's trying to break him. And here comes Maka. Maka's probably going to get some time splits and that'll tell him where he needs to be, what kind of effort he needs to push the last 5K of the race. Well, he is making up time. He's less than two minutes down now. Sarah Groff has taken over the lead and looks really comfortable. Sarah's in cruise control. She's got to be feeling pretty good about this. Again, this is her best leg. If there's no one in front of her, she's got to be feeling good about the win coming up here. And what beautiful grounds here in Qinglong Lake Park into the dirt for Sarah Groff. You can hear a calling out for water. Hydration, very important. Very key at this race. Coming off a hard bike, your muscles are fatigued. Sometimes you forget to drink. Nikki Samuels of New Zealand is chasing hard. And in third spot, let's see, Lavelle is slipping back. Interesting technique on how they come down the stairs. Looks like some athletes came down the side while others took the stairs. Back to the lead. Groff is charging, really comfortable. The woman from Hanover, 30 years of age, and she is coming to the age where many triathletes peak. 
Yeah, a lot of triathletes peak in the 30s, and so she's right there. And, and running on this type of surface is great. It's, it's really unique. Most of the times you're out on roads and highways, being able to run on dirt is wonderful. Well, the Escape to Alcatraz Triathlon Series is all about unique courses. Now we are starting to see uh, a number of athletes get mixed in. They were some of our age group competitors right there in front. They, of course, are in lap one. But look at this, Doherty pushing on the uphills and Reed catching up on the downs. That's tough for Matt. He's got more weight, taller athlete. Bevan knows this, and Bevan's going to take advantage on the uphills here. Well, it looks like on this final lap in the dirt, Doherty has finally broken Matt Reed. That is a horrible feeling. <laughs>